Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Fiery protest in Tavern St. Andrew following allegations of forces. Local government minister for Port Maria. And later in sports, rugged girls victory over Grenada in World Cup qualifier. I'm Giovanni Dennis and here are the details. Up first, residents in Tavern, Papine St. Andrew staged a fiery protest in the community this morning. They say they've been ill-treated by members of the security forces who are stationed in the community. Now our reporter Cody and Barrett is on location. The situation unfolding in Tavern Community Center in Papine is that residents have blocked the roadways. As you can see behind me, they have set this car ablaze blocking the roadways. Earlier we saw police officers removing some of the debris from the roadway. Now one of the residents had expressed to me that they are upset that they have been ill-treated at the hands of security forces. Yeah, um, by the source, by the, last night, to the terrible incident going with the soldier right behind me here. They reach in my house, my bruise, my family, my bruise, everybody here, have a little event right here for a, for a, a, a donation for a cancer person. The police, the soldier, the police them come and say, we can turn down the music, we did it. The soldier, they must be at the party with us drinking. It was a curfew time yet, but they come back and start to say, oh, we're going to watch it not here and kick over all the liquor and everything. And start to fire shot. The shot was fired right behind, right side of me. And the spinner ran to cut the, the spin shell behind me. And hit me in my chest because he reached in my house. And brutality, about seven persons get brutally by the soldier them. Okay. All right, now we will have more in primetime news this evening, but for now it's back to you in studio. Thanks, Cody. And over in St. Mary, the police are searching for a man who fatally stabbed another in the parish yesterday. The deceased has been identified as 24-year-old Jervis Francis, a loans officer from Hyatt Hill, Gale, in the parish. It's reported that sometime before 9 p.m., an altercation developed between the suspect and two relatives of Mr. Francis. The police say Mr. Francis and his relatives subsequently went to the house of the suspect where another altercation developed. The suspect allegedly used a knife to stab Mr. Francis to the left of his neck. The suspect then fled. Mr. Francis was pronounced dead at the Port Maria Hospital. Residents in the community say they are saddened by the death. I feel very sad. I used to be a young guy and I used to be a gentleman, I used to be a mother, but I was done. I feel so terrible about it. Could never happen. No. I will live in one community and should defend love, you know. Everybody's sad about this on one thing. I would just say, well, she was a dry man, yeah. Because anything you have to defend yourself. Now, this is the sixth murder in the parish since, since the start of the year. The St. Andrew North Police are encouraging all communities across the island to utilize a neighborhood watch network to help in the fight against crime. This as the police try to ramp up efforts in their counter-offensive against criminals. Sandy Williams has the story. Neighborhood watch is a crime prevention measure that is most popular in residential communities. One of its main aims is to prevent household and neighborhood crime such as burglary. According to the finding of a research done by the European Crime Prevention Network, neighborhood watches are effective in reducing crime. Several communities in Jamaica have implemented the initiative. However, the St. Andrew North Police say it is critical for all communities across the island to have a neighborhood watch. The Jamaica Constabulary Force do not have enough members to put at everyone's doorstep. The JCF does not have enough members to put in everybody's community, and that's a reality. The fact is, in order for us to police your community, you must police with us. You must help us to police your communities. You are in there. You see what is happening in there on a daily basis. You know what is happening. Head of the Domestic Violence Intervention Center, Deputy Superintendent Jacqueline Dillon, says the community watchdogs must also be attractive to young people. Because many of the crimes that are happening, many of the strange people that comes into your community, they don't come in there by chance. These are people who know 
your community. DSP Dillon believes the initiative can help strengthen the police's effort to stem the country's crime problem. Therefore, she is urging community members to partner with the police through neighborhood watch activities. Let us remember that neighborhood watches are like marriages. If you don't work on your marriages, they're going to fail. If you don't work on your neighborhood watches, they too will fail. DSP Dillon was speaking at a Neighborhood Watch church service in Mannings Hill, St. Andrew, recently. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And this just in, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen is in hospital. Sources told TVJ News that the head of state was rushed to hospital in the wee hours this morning after he complained of not feeling well. King's House has declined to comment on reports that Sir Patrick is in hospital. Now, when contacted by TVJ News this morning, a public relations officer said, quote, no comment. It's reported that Sir Patrick is undergoing observation. He became Jamaica's sixth Governor General on February 26, 2009. Back in St. Mary, a flood warning and alert system for Port Maria. It's one of the promises from the local government minister for the St. Mary capital following significant flood damage from unprecedented rainfall two weeks ago. And even as Desmond McKenzie said certain practices contributed to the flooding, he is putting extra resources into cleaning up all debris and bulk waste in the town. Krista Campbell has the story. A facelift for the St. Mary capital, Port Maria, after flood water swept through the town, causing havoc for residents and businesses. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says he will provide the funds for the town to be repainted, but first, complete the cleanup process. I have instructed the National Solid Waste Management Authority to put on extra trucks in the area for as long as it takes to remove the debris that has occurred. And the regional manager is here as an indication of that work which have started. He's also told Mayor Richard Query to hire additional trucks to finish cleaning up. Drains in the seaside town are also getting special attention. Some are still clogged with silt and other debris from the recent flooding. But Mr. McKenzie says residents also had a hand in the damage across the town. We throw away the things that we don't want anywhere we find convenient to throw it. We build our houses on the brink of the drains and almost in the mouth of the sea, covering drains. And so, he says, a series of public education sessions will be done to remind residents of the importance of keeping drains clear, especially in a town that's below sea level and sandwiched by two rivers. Additionally, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, OTPEM, will help set up a flood warning and alarm system in Port Maria to help residents know when there's likely to be flooding. On the issue of proper garbage disposal, Custos Errol Johnson said he did a test on how to make garbage collection more efficient. Uh, a bag of garbage, it takes the workers one minute to put it on the truck. But if you throw the garbage out there as if you employ somebody to clean it for you, it takes seven minutes. So you can multiply that, eh? It's, it's 120 houses that can be cleared by the truck. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. To other news, financial analyst Dennis Chung says he doesn't believe Jamaica will achieve the 4.3% economic growth projected by the International Monetary Fund, IMF, this year. Mr. Chung predicts it will be about 3%. He says job losses, especially in the entertainment sector, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions will affect prospects for growth. Hopefully we'll get to 4%, but I'm looking more at about 3% this year. Maybe the, the, the recovery um, might, might account for some of it and we can get to 4 But I think it's going to be um, on, the, on the lower side because 
of 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 the the risk that we face from like inflation and the fact that interest rates have to go up. I mean, we've moved to four percent now. The U.S. is moving interest rates up also, um, which means that um, if liquidity tightens there also, it could impact remittances also. And it's now time for a break here on the midday news. But please stay with us. We'll have much more when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. While some farmers in St. Elizabeth have been complaining about perdial larceny, one farmer says he has not been affected by the dreadful act. Clive Blackwood says he has been farming carrots, peanuts, among other crops in the Hansel community for years, but so far has managed to keep out the thieves. I've heard other people complain, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't really speak for them. I can only speak for myself at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they never trouble your things yet? No, not really. Nearly. I, I, maybe may, sometimes I will I might um, have a doubt, but I don't really say anything or there is no clear evidence that it is so. However, Mr. Blackwood says he sympathizes with other farmers who have become victim to perennial larceny. Sometimes you can't even cover your expense and then somebody come and, you know, invade your, your property. So, you know, mm -hmm. devastating to you. Another bad road story out of St. Catherine that has caused residents, that has residents crying rather, shame on successive governments spanning over five decades. Krista Campbell has that story. 75 St. John's Road in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, a place where nice houses and bad road collide. This is the community two days after rainfall. We now have mud, man. It's like pig ramping in a sty when you rainfall. Pandalian and a long time rainfall and a pure water cycle in a this place. They need to do better. They need to come dump the lane, scrape the lane all up there so. Toward the pool, them deep, come like a peer, rich people living here, a peer pool in front of them, also dirty water. <laughs> and so getting in and out of the area requires some degree of planning. You have to walk with your slippers and your shoes in your hand. When you reach out the road, you have to change half it and then put on your shoes and left the slippers one side. Same thing when you're coming out and going in because you cannot wear your nice working shoes, your school shoes, your slippers, nothing at all. And it's not always safe, especially for children and the elderly. You can't go just sit from bank to bank, from yard to It's a good thing. That yard, they walk, man, you walk around it and you grow, you hang on from um, fence and you go out. A resident explains how his daughter was injured as a result of the poor state of the road. What you call it now? She, I run for catch somebody out of the road. And because of the condition of the place, slide and, and break her hand, she has medical attention. The people lament that despite their own efforts at temporary fixes over the years, the road has only deteriorated further. We try to mall it, but the money was never enough. And the majority of the people said they would have liked a little asphalt because the mall just wash off and make the condition deeper and worse every time. We are not equipped. With the, with the road intelligence, because you know, there's a certain way you have to do the road, but because we are just residents, we are just trying something. Because we keep building up on the road, adding things on the road, so some of the houses are lower, so when the rain falls, the water just runs right in. Residents say it's taking a toll on their vehicles. Front end parts are rotten out the undercarriage and all of that, and as you see the humps and the bumps, damage your front end every time. And me live way down at the back. So you know, say me get the full brunt of it. Car, you can't, you can't keep up with the washing. You have to just make sure the inside of the car is clean. Because it doesn't make no sense. When it, when it dry down some more, then you have the mud and yeah. the fender. Your shoes are mud up. Sometimes people ask me, say, yeah. you got a country last night. Me just tell him yes. Ms. Matthews operates a small shop in the community. When it rains, water goes through her shop and into the back of her yard. She says it turns away customers. Some will walk through water, but some, when I plan for walk through water, if you meet them part way. Like when I have that little place inside of me, I can meet them part way with where they want. And some may get a little sale when the rain falls. Me is her daughter, and from my baby till now, I am 45 years old last year, and I this, me, me, me live in a, this, this half a change, a new year now. 
Member of Parliament Dr. Andrew Wheatley says several other lanes off St. John's Road have been fixed in recent time, and the main road which connects St. John's Road to Old Harbour will be repaved starting this Monday. However, he says funds are limited and roads are fixed in order of how heavily trafficked and badly deteriorated they are. He says 75 St. John's Road is on a long list of roads to be repaired and hopes it can be done soon. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute with Cody and Barrett. Businesses and sector leaders are advocating for a 30% increase in the minimum wage. Amid the sharp increase in the cost of living and the depreciation of the Jamaican dollar, they say an increase will offer a safety net for low-income workers whose personal budgets have been decimated by inflation. The proposal comes in the wake of 9.7% January inflation that caused food prices, fuel and other commodities to soar. With an increase of that ratio, the standard minimum wage would be increased to $9,100 weekly from $7,000 and $12,610 for security guards from $9,700. Oil prices gained more than $1 in early trade today on rising jitters over potential conflict between Russia and Ukraine. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Russia would be cut off from international financial markets and denied access to major exports needed to modernize its economy if it invaded Ukraine. Brent crude futures were up $1.34 at $94.88 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures were up $1.68 at $92.75 a barrel. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And it's now time for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. News in the region. In Trinidad, health authorities have voluntarily recalled a number of United States manufactured baby formula brands, even though Trinidad and Tobago was not included in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration recall notification advisory. A statement from the Ministry of Health said the Chemistry Food and Drug Division, CFDD, has advised of the voluntary recall of the brands such as Similac, Alimentum and Elicare Powder from Abbott Nutrition, an international manufacturer of baby formulas. The recall by the FDA comes amidst reports of Corona back to Sakasaki and Saminala Newport infections in the U.S. Early symptoms of Corona back to Sakasaki infection may include, amongst others, fever, poor feeding, irritability, and fatigue or lethargy. And on the international scene, fearing an imminent attack from Russia, four airlines have cancelled flights out of Kyiv through the end of February. KLM was the first to announce the measure earlier this month, but now Lufthansa, Austrian, and Swiss airlines have adjusted their schedules. Swiss airlines say the safety of their passengers and crew is their top priority. The airlines are monitoring the situation and will make decisions to reschedule flights at the end of the month. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And here's a preview of what's coming up in a primetime news in focus special report, Social Media Scam, this evening at 7. I have very sleep late night. From lottery scams to social media scams. It's not a new scam, but it's more prevalent now. Fraudsters preying on unsuspecting consumers. I realized that it was all a scam because I've been waiting for the, the table to deliver and all know it can't reach me. What are the signs and how can you avoid being scammed? Find out in a primetime news in Focus special report starting Monday, February 21. To a quick break, when we come back, we'll have your midday sports support with Simon Preston. Welcome back. It's now time for midday sports. I'm Simon Preston. Head coach of the Reggae Girls, Vin Blaine, says he's disappointed the Reggae Girls didn't score more goals in their victory over Grenada in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup qualifiers in St. George's on Sunday. 
The Reggae Girls won 6-1 thanks to a double from Khadija Bunny Shaw and Jody Brown and individual strikes from Tiffany Cameron and Alika Keane. But Blaine feels the Jamaicans should have scored more. Jamaica remains a second in the group on six points and a plus nine goal difference, while the Dominican Republic are also at the top with six points, but with a plus 13 goal difference. Yeah, definitely disappointed. I think, I think we get some looks and goals that we didn't capitalize on them. But it is a, it's a situation where we have to know um, go into a, a, um, a game against that ref that we might have to just force to win. And, and they can get a draw. And that's, that's, that's the difficulty we're facing. Yeah. You know, so we have to try and make it up in the next game if we can. The Reggae Girls will next be in action on April 9 against the Cayman Islands away before welcoming the Dominican Republic to the National Stadium on April 12. Only the group winner will advance to the CONCACAF final round in Mexico in July. Back locally now as seven-time winners Portmore United will face Harbourview in action from the Jamaica Premier League at the UAJFF Captain Horace World Centre of Excellence this afternoon. Portmore United are seventh in the table on five points and a minus four goal difference, while Harbourview are sixth also on five points but with a minus one goal difference. Kickoff is at one o'clock. At 3.15, Tivoli Gardens will entertain Dun Beholden at the same venue. And finally, reggae boy striker Jordan Fletcher has joined Indian Premier League club Kerala FC from Mount Pleasant Academy until the end of the season. The 24-year-old earned this deal after netting six goals in 13 appearances for the St. Anne-based club last season. Kerala FC are fifth in the Indian Premier League on three points, and Fletcher will be available for selection for their next game against Naroka FC on March 3. Fletcher has scored one goal in three appearances for the reggae boys since his debut in 2017. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Giovanni, it's over to you. And that is it indeed for the midday news. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.